Professor William Wagner is an internationally recognized expert in the Constitution in constitutional law. He previously served uh, in the U.S. courts as a federal judge. Prior to his appointment on the federal bench, he served as a legal advisor and the chief American diplomat for the Department of Justice at an American embassy in Africa. William also served as senior U.S. prosecutor litigating hundreds of federal cases and serving as the chief appellate litiga litigator for the office of the U.S. attorney. Prior to serving in the Justice Department, William served as legal counsel in the U.S. Senate. Tonight, he will be here to give us an analysis of the ballot proposal, Voters Not Politicians, which would end gerrymandering and allow a panel of voters to draw up the voting district. We are very happy to have William back with us, uh, and we're happy to uh, consider him one of Lake Syria Tea Party's friends. Yes. Professor Wagner. Thank you. Friends does not begin to do it justice. I, I look around and, and I see more than friends here. I see uh, people with a heart connection, uh, people I've known for a very long time. And I see some new faces, a lot of new faces too. But we have uh, a commitment in this room to the rule of law, to good governance, and to you know, preserve our freedoms of religion, our freedoms of speech, our, our right to protect our families uh, under the Second Amendment. And as I look around this room and speak to groups uh, across uh, the state in the past few weeks, uh, and not all of them, what I would say, as friendly as you guys are, um, what I also see in this room is the conscience of this state. And you are the conscience uh, of a party also that I, I think uh, increasingly is in need of reminding that we cannot govern this nation uh, without understanding that there is a good and a bad and a right and a wrong and that every law that is passed um, has to be grounded in some ethical uh, notion of right and wrong and good and bad. Um, and, and so thank you for being that conscience. Tonight I want to spend, uh, first of all, how much time do I have? How much time do you want? Uh, let's, let's do 25 minutes and a couple. All right, give me like a five minute okay. notice. Um, uh, did everybody get a card with our contact information on it? No. no. Uh, make sure you do on the way out, and, and, and if, you, um, if you sign up and, and join our Facebook page, I'll get you free copies of our uh, electronic versions of our books, and, and we've got some books there. Uh, again, they are uh, they're gifts uh, from us, but any donations to help cover the costs, so, uh, appreciate it, because uh, we don't get free gas to come here and don't get free printing or anything like that but um, but we are trying to season the public dialogue with truth and oh my goodness you see what's happening these days and you think how in the world is it happening how do we have Republicans for example getting ready to sponsor and sign up for this national vote did they not count the votes in the in the George Bush election did they not count the votes in this last election do they not understand the Tenth Amendment that, re that actually reserves most of the power under our great Constitution to we the people here in the states. The states no longer matter. Are we? And I got to tell you, the other side's brilliant. It is a. I, I taught constitutional law for 15 years. This is an end round around around the Constitution, and I don't see a constitutional challenge to it. So they have brilliantly figured out how to get around. Uh, one of the most important constitutional protections, the least understood probably, but one of the most important constitutional protections to we, the people, and to the states. That's right. And when you call your legislatures, be kind to them, be nice, be respectful, but ask them, why are you considering voting for a provision that is going to allow the city of New York, Chicago, uh, Detroit, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Miami to decide our president for the next 75 years? Thank you, Ask that question. You, where, I don't even think we'll ever see 
a presidential candidate come to, you know, Grand Rapids again? Why come to Grand Rapids when, you know, that's not where the votes are? Um, and I talk about some of these things um, ahead of our main topic tonight, uh, which is Prop 2, because it all is part of a larger concern that it concerns not a strong enough word. I was at the Supreme Court for the nomination of our current nominee uh, in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, Brett Kavanaugh. The other side is extremely well funded and extremely organized. I was there and other than the Fox News reporter, I was probably, me and, and, and my colleague were probably the only two conservatives on the, uh, on the street. There were thousands of leftists, I'm gonna be nice, irrational crazies, <laughs> who were very well organized and very well funded by people who weren't crazy. Right. I watched them throw away $50,000 worth of signs because they didn't need them anymore. You've seen those signs. You've paid for them. You've, you've all paid for them. You all paid five, seven bucks a piece for those really nice signs. Well, they had thousands and thousands and thousands of them for every possible nominee right. wow. that the president could have appointed. They had truckloads of them, and they were ready to hand them out to whoever was nominated to hold up, we hate this person, he's a bad person, he's going to do all these bad things. And, and when he nominated Kavanaugh, they just threw away probably $50,000 worth of signs, and it was nothing to them. That's how well organized and well funded they are. Elections matter. That Supreme Court nominee is going to be the person that decides whether or not we're going to have the rule of law in this nation. Are we going to return to a constitution where the Supreme Court says this is a nation that is a limited government. Our Constitution here limits the exercise of government power, both in its structure and in the Bill of Rights. And so when the Second Amendment says we have the right to bear arms, we've got the right to bear arms. When it says we have the right to the free exercise of religious conscience, it doesn't mean that we only can pray in our, our bedroom or in our church. It means that we can freely exercise our religious conscience. When it says we have the right to free speech, it doesn't mean, well, unless some snowflake professor decides to say, well, we're going to call speech conduct and we're going to call it hate speech now, and that kind of speech isn't going to be protected. No. Speech, free speech, is free speech. And this nominee when he becomes the appointed Supreme Court Justice, is going to stand up for that rule of law, and he's going to look at the Tenth Amendment and says, hey, the states do matter. The states do matter. Virtually all of the power in this nation, where does it reside? It resides in the states, because unless it's specifically enumerated here in the Constitution, the federal government doesn't have that power. And why do you think the other side is willing to throw away so much money and be so well organized and make this Supreme Court nomination sound more like a, uh, a po political debate over uh, abortion or over gun, the right to protect yourself and have guns or, or whatever? You know, they're so worried about separating children at the border, but they've got no problem separating children in the womb. Yep. That is what they're afraid of. Is th it, and what I come to saw, see, and you're going to see this so clearly when I go through Prop 2. What I've come to see is, yes, they want to advance their uh, leftist policies through unelected uh, courts because that's easier to do than to try and get uh, a majority of people that are politically accountable that actually have to have a job interview called an election every couple of years. And so they want to have an unelected judge, and they want to have an unelected administrative deep state. And now New York Times has confirmed that there's a deep state, so I guess we can call it mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and, and they want to have an unelected boards uh, to further their policies 
but much more than that. And I am convinced of this after um, spending time in Washington during that nomination, I, and I talked to probably 30 senators about the nomination and, and asked them about the political climate. They don't just want to advance their leftist policies. I am absolutely convinced they want to undo the constitutional order and replace it with something. Yes. <clears throat> and so right now, the way we draw our political districts is folks like those gentlemen that came up here and so eloquently, and God bless you guys for running for office, and so eloquently said, here's who I am, here's my record, I stand on my record, and you know what? These guys are smart enough to know that we're all going to go look that up. And we're going to hold them accountable, and we're going to say, hey, he's telling the truth. Job interview, you're rehired. These are the guys that right now draw the political districts. And just like on all these other issues we've talked about, the issue of drawing districts is a question that we can look at and we can evaluate and we can decide whether we're going to rehire them and vote for them in the next election. The, the drawing of political districts is a politically accountable process right now where we the people in our republic hold our representatives accountable. Now, everywhere that the other side fails with regard to, you know, upholding the rule of law, they seem to be way ahead of, you know, anybody else when it comes to being able to articulate a false narrative and make it sound good. Because what have they done here? They're saying, you know, this is their line you're going to hear. Voters, not politicians. Voters, not politicians. Well, they want to replace the system I just told you about, the politically accountable system, the system that is politically accountable to each one of us in this room, and remove us from the process, and instead they're going to have one politician appoint 13, what I'm going to say are going to be mostly leftist bureaucrats, yeah. to draw those districts. Yeah. And you're going to read, and somehow they pulled this off, they got the people that wrote you know, that wrote up the summary to call it an independent commission. Well, anytime you see the word commission, folks in this room, we already start to, we get our hair up, don't we? Because we know it's like, it's, it's, like a, it's like a dog or something that senses danger. You know there's something wrong. And once again, this is just like those unelected judges I was telling you about and unelected uh, bureaucrats. This is another commission of unelected bureaucrats. And let me go back to where I started and said, once again, they're very well funded and very well organized. So I, you know, I always like to follow the money. So I went and researched, where's all this money coming from to support this? Yeah. Every single one of them, Soros type leftist, far leftist group. The word Obama pops up, Granholm pops up. Um, you know, well, unbelievable. I couldn't find a single centrist source. I'm sure there probably is one somewhere, but there wasn't. All far left leftist money paying for this. So guess who's got a politically motive for changing it? That's the well-funded part. Now you want to know the well-organized part? While we were all out there, and wow, largest percentage of delegates in a room I've been in in a long time, and I speak in front of a lot of folks like you guys, so God bless you guys and yes. thank you for getting out there and doing that. But while we were getting elected precinct delegate as a Republican, because we had some serious fights up at a convention, and, and, those, and those elections mattered, those delegate elections mattered. Guess what they were doing? They were taking a bunch of their leftist Democrats and telling them, don't run for a Democratic delegate. We want you to run as an independent delegate. Yeah, really? wow. And why were they doing that? Because Prop 2 says, well, you know, a few of them get to be Republican, a few of them get to be Democrat, but then all the rest of them are independent, and, and guess what? First Bonero is now considered an independent. Well. Highly funded, highly organized, but you know what? We're the conscience of the state. Yes. Truth does matter. To them, truth doesn't matter. I've debated them all throughout the country, and one of the things they'll say is there's no such thing as a moral absolute, there's no such thing as truth. When they say there's no such thing as a moral absolute, I ask them if they're absolutely sure, and all of a sudden these PhDs go, 
<laughs> because they just realize they've stated a moral absolute. They just don't like to be called out on it. Um, you know, what, when you look at this, and this goes back to when I was a, a very smart, like I was 26 years old, I had just out of law school, I was legal counsel at the U.S. Senate, and I, and I was too prideful for my own good at the time. And, I'm, and, and so I'm this low-level lawyer at the Senate, and, and they've got these elevators that are for U.S. Senators only, and I'm thinking, oh, there's nobody around, so I just take it. <laughs> well, sure enough, next floor stops, it opens up, and Democratic Senator from South Carolina gets on, looks at me, you're not a senator, son. <laughs> so um, I was on the Republican staff, so I didn't feel, have to worry about getting fired or anything. But he did two things. Um, he um, peeled off my name tag because I was just going to coming from an event. He says, you don't want your name tag on that side. You want it on this side. So when you shake hands with someone, son, they see your name and they remember who you are. And I said, like, well, that, thank you for the political advice. But what we are really talking about, in that computers had just taken... Um, we're, we're starting to become a force. And so one of the things that was a really hot topic uh, that everybody was talking about, and so I started talking to him about it at the very end, was, well, why can't we just redraw these districts fairly now that we've got computer programs to draw them in a way that we can guarantee can be done in a very fair and, and proper way? And he looked at me, son. He said, you got a lot to yearn, young man. He says, he says, there's two ways to draw a district, and I don't care how many computer programs you got drawn it. There's a Republican way and a Democratic way. And that was true in 1986 when he said that to me, and it's, and it's true today. And so when the other side presents all this idea that this is about an independent commission, it's about drawing districts fairly, it's about you know returning some type of power um, to the voters, when in reality it's just the opposite of all those things. Everything it's just the opposite of all those things. Then why did Virg Monero, you know, become a, a, an independent delegate, or so I'm told? Why isn't the Heritage Foundation supporting this thing? Well, it's because leftist politicians know that they cannot get their policies through in a way that's politically accountable to the people. So that's why they use unelected judges, that's why they use unelected commissions like this one. And I gotta tell you, we've been around, we've all been around for a very long time. I'm not quite, I'm not sure I've ever seen an extreme team like the other side has put forward this time. Yep. You know, I had the opportunity to debate their uh, attorney general candidate on, on one of your Detroit TV stations about a year or so ago. And in the little green room beforehand, oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever met somebody who was more publicly anti-Christian, anti-faith, anti-free speech, anti-gun, and, and thought that she had the power, you know, as an elected official someday, to actually, you know, change those things just because she believed that they should be true. <coughs> And that's the problem. We've got Supreme Court justices doing these things, and we've got very high-level shenanigans during the nomination process. When you have U.S. senators colluding with, you know, the leftist disruptors that were going on there, what kind of message does that send to your local township board? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we can violate the law, too. What kind of message does that send to a, to a Michigan district or a Michigan circuit judge? Oh, well, we don't have to follow the law, either. We can just defy the law, too. And I can show you all throughout the state, we represent Christians in the U.S. Supreme Court um, and, and take on, you know, leftist commissions when they, you know, defy our freedoms, you know, every day in this state. And, you know, the press doesn't very often report it, but it's happening every single day. Day. So one of the things I want to challenge you to do is make sure, and I, I'm going to give you guys as many as you need, um, and this is why we, when, when you're donating to us, we're, uh, these are things that can go with your um, handouts when you go and knock on doors. Um, take a look at it. It, it. it basically, truthfully as we could possibly do it, and we didn't have to exaggerate, truthfully as we could possibly do it, just explain what Prop 2 is and why it truly isn't what they say it is. Um,
when I look at what we're, what we're facing here, and I got to tell you, this was a brutal four months, five months for me. And I don't know where all you guys stand, but I got to tell you, most of the people that I wanted to win at that convention weren't there. And was I around at the national convention when the shenanigans happened? Was I around, you know, here when the shenanigans happened in Michigan? And how do I feel right now? I feel more than gut punched. Because this is the first time it's happened. We've been around 30 years. And, and, and usually what the, others, what the other folks on our team will, will say at this point is you're disgruntled. No, I was disgruntled 50, 30 years ago and 15 years ago and maybe even 20 years ago. Um, right now, I'm angry as hell. And then I wake up the next day and I look at who we're running against. And I think of what Ronald Reagan said. And he talked about, if I can move the needle 85%, I'm going to move the needle 85%. Thank you for saying this. Um, and I would rather move the needle 85% in the next four years than watch them move the needle 120% the other way because I can guarantee you, and I have been fighting these battles all throughout the United States and actually around the world, especially if you guys are people of faith and people that care about the Second Amendment and care about the First Amendment freedom of expression. These guys are, they have a target like you won't believe on those liberties. And, and we don't have to get to, we can, I can spend a whole day on what hap will happen with our economic policies. And so I'm getting up from my gut punch. And there's a lot of things I'm going to be doing in the next four years to make sure that the crap that happened this year isn't going to happen again. But somewhere down the road, we got to come together as the conscience of this state. Because if we, the people, lose that, and I'm telling you right now, the Republican Party needs you guys. They don't even know it. Some of them don't even know it. Some of them don't even know it, but they need you more than ever. And I got to tell you, if we do this right, um, we will move the needle 85% in the next four years. Um, I know I'm probably, maybe, no one's throwing a tomato yet. <laughs> no, my pain couldn't be any deeper than yours. And I gotta tell you, I'm a warrior. I, I have fought my that's what that's what that's what judges well, I was a judge for a while, and I guess you're not a warrior then. And I, and I hated being a judge because you were out of the arena. And we have got to fight a larger enemy than the one that just hurt us pretty bad. The whole reason we're dealing with Prop 2 right now is because a Republican nominee to the Supreme Court didn't follow the rule of law. You want to read the rule of law? Read Justice Markman's opinion saying this thing should never be on the ballot right now. Right. Yep. And there's no reason that the other Republican appointed or, or nominated folks shouldn't have been going along with that. Right. One of the best reasoned opinions I've seen in a very, very long time. That being said, this is on the ballot. If this passes, if Prop 2 passes, we will be facing a one-party, California-style monocracy for the next 75 years. Because if leftists get to appoint the folks that draw the districts and they draw the districts, right now you go call any of your friends in California and ask them in the election, last election how many Republicans they even saw on the ballot. Because now they've got additional regulations that they've written up that keeps Republicans off the ballot. Even. We can do this. We can do this. And from the bottom of my heart, 
you know, I normally don't chase the elephant and I don't chase the donkey. We chase the lamb, I say, because we're, we're always trying to defend religious liberty, defend the Second Amendment right, trying to defend the First Amendment. But right now, if we don't stop this, we won't have any of those other things. And so if there's anything that the party can unify around, it is this proposition right here. And so at least go to the polls. And you at least know that we can all agree to pull the poll, to pull against this. And when you're in the booth, say a little prayer, let the Lord speak to your heart, and I believe that we'll all do the right thing because voting, nothing more than, there's nothing strong, there's nothing more of a matter of conscience than our right to vote. So, um, I want to open up to some questions now. Yeah. Okay. I went to their meeting, and they used Democrats, the Democrat district, to make a, to fool the people. And another thing, uh, he, he went to, I'll, I'll rephrase it, he went to the meeting, and he's talking about the subterfuge that went on, the trickery that went on they, in different places. They yeah. used Democrats yeah. to make it look like, so they wouldn't think it was a Republican. Yeah. And then also, delegates, their families, their kids, nobody can, nobody can be on this commission. Well, and he's talking about, and he's, and he's right, the way they've written this proposal, you know, true Republicans, you know, true people that truly understand the political process, they're not even going to be allowed to be on, and they determine on the commission. They determine who's a Republican and who's a Democrat. And, and, exactly, they determine who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, who's an Independent. So guess what? That is why they were so well organized and got all these independents being filed. And it's the Secretary of State, by the way, that is the um, politician that would be supposedly appoint these, which is why you will see more than you've ever seen before, the Democrats put more money and, and more organization behind that race than they ever have before. I'm guessing. That's my prediction. Yeah. Do we have any signs available? No one um, We've got, I, I printed off with my own money, me and another guy printed off with our own money, you know, I don't know, with the first 10,000 right now. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that some of you folks will throw some money in and some other folks, you know, maybe some people of means will buy. We need to get about a million of them, I'm guessing. Right. I don't know. We should ask state party about that. We're, we're talking to state party. We're talking, I mean, the chamber. I mean, the folks that, that folks in this room, I know we don't normally, you know, cozy up to some of these other guys. Uh, but this, this is an area where everybody's upset because everybody's um, truth is threatened here. And so the chamber is, you know, really upset at this. And, you know, a lot of other, the mainstream, a lot of rhinos are upset at this. Yeah. Have you used the app called Nextdoor? You know of an app called... I've heard of it, yes. The app called Nextdoor, she says. Yeah, I think everyone needs to go on Nextdoor, try to figure it out. And you can post a link or a picture. I'll put our team on it tomorrow. She talks about how we can put this on the app next door and get it spread out to a lot of people. Facebook. Yeah, if Facebook. That, we were already using Facebook and some of the normal media. Yes? Uh, for redistricting, why can't we just start at the southwest corner of the state, draw a box when it gets big enough, draw another one next to it, next to it, and keep on going on like that until the end of discussion. No politics. Well, for the same reason that when I made that proposal to that seasoned Southern United States Senator in 1986, the redistricting process is an inherently political process. Um, and no matter how you do it, I mean, can, is, it, is it physically possible to do what you just said? Absolutely. With computer programs today, we could do it so precisely. You know, you know, some computer programmer could make it so precise and so constitutional and so in compliance with every statutory rule um, and so fair that we could, we could all say, oh, wow, praise God, we now have a fair process. But that's not what redistricting is. Redistricting itself is a political process. And so that statement that um, uh, the senator from South Carolina said to be 1986 is still true today. There's two ways of doing it, a Republican way and a Democratic way. 
And the other side knows that, which is why they're trying to call it an independent commission, so that they can hoodwink enough of the voters to get them to go with it. Yes? I, I'm kind of mischievous in that. She says she's mischievous, so I like her already. <laughs> when you go on Facebook and somebody writes comments, you can always um, comment on their comments and one of the things I used to do was for Paul Ryan I used to say retire Ryan send ten dollars to his opponent and I'd give him the information if we were to do that as a message where would we send them to to donate money to this would I, we send them to the Great Lakes Justice Center don't send them there um, <laughs> unless it's for just this particular thing. You, you, you could send them there and have them call me because I the Great Lakes Justice Center is our legal division of Salt Lake Global. Um, we are a nonprofit though and so um, so we don't endorse candidates. Um, we are taking a position on this because it is a matter of good governance for us. This is a matter of protecting free speech and free exercise of religious concepts. It's a matter of protecting the right to vote and, 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 and all these things. But if you um, could say send $10 to... Oh, oh absolutely. Want, and and just say, say, just put in the memo, um, you know, printing costs, Prop 2. Printing costs? Yeah, printing costs. But how do they get the money to you? How do they get the $10 um, to you? It, on, on the card, there is... Um, no, not that card. I'm sorry. The little card that I showed you guys. This one right here. This has the contact information. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and there's a and, and I don't know if you guys have heard of um, Givelify or not. You've probably heard of PayPal. Yeah. One of the farthest leftist organizations in the country, one of the most um, openly hostile to Christians, Christian people in, in, in the country. Um, and so we switched from PayPal to to Givelify, and I actually been. Um, it, it, it's on. It's when you go here, you just click the button. You, you go go to the website. I'm sorry. Yeah. When we go to Salt and Lake Global. Right, SLG Witness, right there. Yeah, go to that website, and, and then you can either write a check and send it to the address there, or you can, um, or, or you can click on the Givelify button where it says donate, and and it's very easy. It makes it very user friendly.